Welcome to DaVinci Resolve. Here's how to make this tracked big eyes effect. I'm here in the timeline of Resolve. I have my clip on my timeline. And the first thing I'm gonna do is right click and make that a new compound clip. This is mostly to keep things clean when we move into the fusion page. But if you would like more information on why I use a compound clip and the difference between a compound clip and a fusion clip and a fusion composition and a referenced composition and all your other possible options for getting something into the fusion page from the edit page, check a link in the description for my recent video all about all those possible options. It's a big breakdown, but there's lots of value there. But once we have that as a compound clip, I do want to make a note that I specifically chose this clip because it is close to th hopefully the worst of all worlds. We have this dynamic motion back and forth, but also um, not intentionally, the shutter speed on the camera at this time was too low. So we have like extra motion blur to deal with. Let's see how our tracking handles it. But just with my playhead over this clip, I'm going to click this button to open up the fusion page. Here it presents us with a simple note uh, this media in and then media out. Anything we do in between these two nodes will be sent back to the edit page. I'm gonna select this first node. I'm gonna press shift space to pull up this select tool feature. And I'm going to type in tracker and I want this plain tracker. I will bring that in and it will give us one little tracking point here. If you are in DaVinci Resolve Studio, by default, this will be in Teletrack, but I'm gonna go ahead and select this option here to change that back to a point tracker. Now that will add a point tracker, but we can get rid of that in Teletrack. Just click the trash can to get rid of that. And I'm gonna click and add another point tracker. So we have a point two, point three. Hey, I will just rename those to point one and point, point two. And if I come to the beginning of my clips, I have point one, point two. So hey, why don't we just bring those right over where we want to track, which are my eyes. I can scale in if I need to get this kind of centered, do a rough pass on the second one here over on this eye. Now the way these tracking points uh, work, you'll see you have this small box and then this larger box with a dotted line. The small box, is the uh, specific feature that you are going to track, the entire bounds of whatever's inside of that. And the large box is where the tracker is going to search for that feature frame to frame. So if you have a lot of motion, you will want to uh, crank up this larger box. So let's go ahead and do that uh, just to be safe anyway. And you can reframe this smaller box. I'm just generally going to include my entire eye. Maybe if I had some better footage or like, um, if my lighting was a little evener, um, I would, you know, narrow this in because you'll you'll see some issues where you will kind of run into soon. But at this point, I'm not going to run this tracker. Um, I could, but I'm going to leave it for now because after this, I'm going to add in a dent node and things get crazy quick. <laughs> um, you have lots of different types of dents. We're going to just change this to dent two, which is much more nice, like a standard dent. But if you bring down the size, and change the center to over that eye, you'll notice, hey, click away. We've got that big eye effect. You can change either the size or the strength depending on how big you want this. But if you just want something intense, but you know, not crazy, crazy, you can dial that in. And I'm just gonna copy that dent and then paste it again. So we have dent one and dent two. Cool. And on this second dent, I can slide this over, except this is kind of just a preview. We won't keep these super for long because back on this tracker, uh, let's do a little more setup here. We do have these two tracking points. We customized its search zone. The other option I'm gonna change is this adaptive mode. By default, it's none. I'm gonna change this to best match. That gives us this match tolerance. Uh, I'm gonna change this to either a uh, 0.15, maybe 0.2. Most of the time I do 0.15. I'm not super into the specifics of the, the fine technicalities, but what I believe this best match is doing, it's giving you a little leeway frame to frame if it doesn't find the best match. If you don't have this adaptive mode at all, I find this tracker a lot more uh, prone to just like jumping around and like losing that track and not quite being able to, to get back to it. So with that set on tracker, let's go to our two dents. And on the center for this dent one, I'm gonna right click and go to connect to, we have that tracker and I'm going to point one offset position. You'll see that'll shift a little bit because we, we already moved the tracker up to that eye. And I'm gonna do the same thing on dent two, connect to tracker, point to offset position. So we have this set up. And then now if I just go back to this tracker 
and select this button. If I set this up somewhere in the middle of this clip, I could press this button to track forward and backwards. Um, but we set this up right at the first frame, so I just need to track forward. And as soon as I start doing this, you'll see those points. It sort of crops in and goes frame to frame. You can sort of see if anything gets crazy and things look like they're generally doing all right. You'll see the path over this. So if you just click out of there, it'll go away. And let's, let's preview automatically. Back and forth, back and forth. Hey, pretty all right. Towards the end with like my eyelids sort of coming down, um, you'll notice that like those start to bulge as well. There you could use something like these offset features. You could keep in those to like shift that down a little bit, get like more on the pupil and on this point one as well. You'll notice here, click away. Now, I did say keyframe, that would be something you would want to keyframe because now um, that is shifted for the entirety of this effect. So if that's not something like at the beginning now, it's a little lower than I would want it to. Um, so you could like keyframe where it starts to drift a little bit, but if you just want something general, um, something general, something quick, hey, we have some big eye effects tracked pretty quickly. And if you're working with slightly better footage than this, your results will likely be better. I posted a quick sample of this in the DaVinci Resolve uh, subreddit, and one of the first comments was asking me if I remodeled my eyes in Blender. No, I just tracked the center of two dent nodes. Fusion can be pretty neat. Now here's a little something extra, I'm pretty sure. I can package up this effect, those three nodes, save them out, give them some custom controls, and I could make this effect that works drag and drop on the edit page. I might need to fiddle with it for a bit, you know, using those two tracking points, see how it works. But I have other tracking presets. I have my locked on stabilization effect, which I just uh, published a fix for that. I have a tracked text free preset, and then I also have my paid uh, master tracker preset, which lets you track, you know, text and uh, images and video uh, into your frame. It's pretty neat, but I can always use some motivation so if you would like to see this effect as a drag and drop effect on the edit page, you need to leave a comment. You need to let me know. Uh, I, I think it's pretty likely I might do it, but um, depending on how soon I do it might be up to the response. So let me know if this as a free preset would at least be kind of interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.